September 21st, 1952. Anna Elizabeth Mitchell is born in Bavaria, West Germany. Daughter to devout Catholics, she would attend Mass twice a week for most of her life. When she was 16, Anna experienced a serious seizure that led to a neurologist diagnosing her with temporal lobe epilepsy. Although her seizures became less frequent with medication, almost vanishing altogether, something was stewing under Anna's serene surface. The years that follow would see her falling into religious fervor that would eventually lead to the death of Anna Mitchell, better known by her nickname, Annalise. Annalise Mitchell didn't know what to do. When she graduated college at 20, she began to notice a particular distaste for religious iconography. She couldn't stand to be near a cross or even enter a holy place. For a devout Catholic like Annalise, this could mean only one thing. Possession. She reported seeing demon faces everywhere she went, and claimed she would hear demonic whisperings that told her she was damned during prayer. She sought out the help of various clergy, but they declined. They believed that Annalise was suffering from a uniquely medical abnormality, and they pled with her to go to a doctor. Annalise began to exhibit outwardly bizarre behavior. Her family claimed she would rip off her clothes in a frenzy, eat coal and spiders, and urinate on the floor and lick it up. She had spent two days under a table barking at her family like a dog, it had gotten out of control. Annalise's mother finally found someone who would listen in Ernst Alt, a Catholic priest. Alt received permission from Bishop Josef Strangel to perform the sacred rite of exorcism under the condition that it was conducted under total secrecy. September 24th, 1975. Father Arnold Renz, assisted by Alt, performs Annalise's first exorcism. After its conclusion, Mitchell's parents decide to cut off contact with medical professionals and lay her care solely on themselves and the priests. Over the next 10 months, Renz and Alt would perform 67 exorcisms on Annalise, twice a week, each lasting upwards of four hours. During these exorcisms, Annalise stated that she was infested with multiple demons, chiefly Lucifer, Cain, Judas Iscariot, Adolf Hitler, Nero, and Fleischmann. Annalise tore the tendons and broke the bones in her knees from constantly kneeling to pray. She stopped eating and drinking other than when forced. She spent the better part of her 10 months of exorcism restrained. On July 1st, 1976, Annalise Mitchell died from malnutrition and dehydration. Almost immediately afterwards, her parents and the priests that performed the rites were charged with negligent homicide. At the time of her death, Annalise weighed just 66 pounds, her knees were broken, she had become pale with large black splotches surrounding her eyes, casting a ghastly visage. Renz and Alt throughout the case maintained that Annalise was possessed and that her death had finally freed her. Her parents, on the other hand, did not think she was free. A nun had informed Annalise's mother that she had a vision of Annalise's body still whole, a sign of possession. Her parents had her exhumed and only discovered that her body had suffered standard decomposition. Renz and Alt were found guilty and sentenced to six months in jail, which was suspended. They served three years of probation apiece. Annalise's parents were found guilty, but not punished because they had suffered enough, which is taken into account in German law. Today, Annalise Mitchell's story means different things to different people. Religious groups in Germany have touted it as a victory of spirituality over science, 
and Annalise's grave has become a kind of pilgrimage site. Pilgrims will show up to sing and leave notes before continuing on with their day. Others see it as proof of the backwards nature of organized religion, a sad tale of what happens when you rely chiefly on your faith instead of tested medical practices. But what do you think? Was Annalise Mitchell actually possessed? Or did her parents and two priests watch a 23-year-old die in the mistaken belief that she had a spiritual sickness? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Dread Unsolved. I'm also on Instagram at Dread the Unsolved and Facebook. You can catch new episodes of Dread the Unsolved every Thursday on YouTube. Thanks for watching.